Fire doesn't come quickly. The process is intricate and requires patient attention. Each element intentional, the offering simple. But when the wind catches flame, the fire cannot be contained. It's time for the church to stand up. Time for the salt to be salt. Time for the light to be light. Time for the church to be unapologetic. Come on, time to use our platforms to say that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the light. Time for you to be radical about your belief. Unapologetic. And we have to become the generation that will push back the forces of darkness. Come on, say amen. revival on what? On our terms. God's not attracted to lip service. He's attracted to hunger, to those who pursue Him, to those who bring sacrifices. God says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. Thank you for tuning in 
to this live broadcast on this Pentecost Sunday. Today we are going to be blessed with a dynamic word from Pastor Art. Absolutely, Ange. Right now, though, we will be doing praise and worship. Get up, stand to your feet. We are going to have a fire-filled praise and worship. Good morning, church. The Spirit of the Lord is here. Make a joyful noise and give Jesus praise.
mercies are new, mercies are new every morning. Oh, for your mercies are new, mercies are new every morning. See, oh, 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 I will praise, I will praise. Oh, Yeah. 
Okay, here's the question, how many of you are thirsty? How many of you are hungry? Then you've got an amazing week that you can come starting tonight. Okay, we're a little bit dry this morning, that's okay. Um, I'm gonna preach faith in you. And then tonight you're gonna come and worship uh, in an incredible way. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we are gonna have an amazing time. This is Pentecost Sunday. Uh, God's gonna fill you up. If you will come and press into Him, if you are the one that diligently seeks Him, in Jesus name you're all looking beautiful you look great um, uh, let's work with the Holy Ghost and um, we have many baby dedications and uh, we are either there or we're not there and if we're not there it's just ain't working and then we get on with what we're supposed to do so welcome to TBN welcome TBN here to welcome to one gospel uh, praise TV Facebook live YouTube CRC Online Correctional Facilities, people all over the world from Russia, Israel, America, Europe, India, Pakistan, China and Africa. Of course the many thousands in Bloomington and all the other churches with us this morning. We are happy that you are with us today for this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. So come on somebody just give the Lord a little a rejoicing. Give him a little bit of praise. Come on. You don't need a song from the music ministry. You just need a song in your heart. Um, uh, to praise Him and to worship Him and to adore Him. Give two or three people a high five and tell them God's got great things in store for you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Um, uh, tell the person uh, sitting next to you, I like what's on your head. Uh, they saw that they saw the happy the happies. Now I'm not talking about the happies. They saw the boldness. No, I'm not talking about the boldness. I'm going to talk about the crown that you are wearing, because you are kings and priests, and you have all been crowned with something that is actually um, amazing, and uh, a crown that defines who you are and how you should carry yourself. So I want to talk to you about a crown of favor. Everybody say favor. Okay, you're going to carry yourself like a king, like a priest, like somebody that's highly favored in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, last week we saw, Without faith it is impossible to please him that is God, for he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Well, when we pursue Jesus, we receive many crowns, a crown of life. If you are born again and you have received that crown, say amen. A crown of righteousness. 
a crown of glory. We're going to talk about these things. You are uh, destined for glory. Pastor Nas, jy die. Wat maak jy so? Wat maak om kalie daar? Jy moet mos aan wind ook wees. Ha? Is wind ook hier so op die link, of wat gebeur in wind ook? Hello wind ook, welcome wind ook. We are glad with us. Come on, let's welcome wind ook. Um, I think he's here for the revival week. Okay. Then there is a crown of, of, of rejoicing. Amen. Uh, well, you, you, can, you, can, you can put these crowns day, uh, down every day or you can wear them. Then there's a crown of exaltation. Then there is a crown of favor and blessing. And I'm going to talk about that. That you are crowned with favor and blessing and that means you are destined for God's blessing that means that you are highly favored that means that you are going to be exalted that means no matter what is happening in the world God's favor is going to give you the unfair advantage and you better get ready for it we have a lot of scriptures to look at this morning in Jesus name so Psalm 5, 5 verse 12, the Bible says, For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. How many righteous here this morning in Jesus' name? Lift your hand and say amen. He says, With favor will thou encompass him as with a shield. Now the word encompass means you will crown him with favor. Je is gekroon. Nie net jou tand nie. Jou wuf. Je is gekroon. That means you're going to be the head, not the toe. Well, I mean, not the, not the foot. You're going to be above only and not beneath. This, I like this. For those of you that like your uh, mail for pudding, um, the scripture literally reads, You will crown him with favor, with blessing, with fatness, as with a shield. Now, uh, we know fatness talks about the goodness of God. You know, we, you, eat, you can eat the fat of the lamb as well. As a matter of fact, the priests um, were instructed to eat the fat. Doctors tell you now today, don't eat the fat, but God says, it's okay. You can have the fat, and you can have the fat of the land, okay? Uh, hey, listen, things are going to happen. I believe it. Uh, or there's a shaking out there in the world, but God's going to turn things around for His people and for His church. While other people are going down, you're going up. While other people are going to uh, 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 struggle, you are going to thrive in Jesus' name because of God's unusual favor upon your life. So... Psalm 54, 11. The Bible says, For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. We're going to talk about all these crowns. So you don't doubt who you are. Because if you doubt who you are, you doubt what you have. And if you doubt what you have received, you will doubt what you can accomplish in life. No good thing does He withhold from those who walk uprightly. No good thing. Say it this morning. Say good things. No, everybody say it. He, uh, he just said, no good thing will he withhold from me. So everybody say this. Say, good things are heading my way in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to have a little bit of an attitude adjustment in the next few weeks uh, that lie ahead. No matter what we go through, you walk through that valley of the shadow of death. At the end of that valley, God says, I prepare a table. I anoint your head. And I'm going to restore goodness and mercy to you. Goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. So I want you to say it this morning. Uh, because Christianity is the great confession. Say it today. Lift your hand and say, I, I am crowned. Say it. Say, I am crowned with a crown of favor and blessing. Say it again. Say, I am crowned with favor and blessing. In Jesus' name. Okay, Pastor Jack, come here quickly, uh, please. Uh, I don't want to wear the crown and, 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 and spoil my hairstyle, but I think you are going to look good as a king. Let's see if it fits. No. Passe. Nee, your kop is te groot. Okay, we need somebody that... Why did you get such a big head so suddenly? Is it because you're walking too close to me? Okay, let's see, my brother. No, my Jack, I wanted to crown you. Okay, are we crowning you with favor? 
So what's the difference between your head and J uh, Pastor Jack's head? Huh? Huh? No, he's got more anointing. No, I'm just playing. Just stay here with me, okay? Uh, so you, you, are, you have a crown of favor. In Psalm 103, verse 1 to 5, the Bible says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all His benefits. Who pardons all your guilt, say, I am forgiven. Say it. Who heals your diseases, say, I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. Say it. Who redeems your life from the pit, say, I am redeemed. Say it. Who crowns you with favor and compassion, say, I am crowned with favor. Say it. You're going to walk out here today and you're going to believe it because I'm giving you the word of God. Who satisfies your mouth with good things. Say good things. Come on, those bitter things are over. Get ready for good things. That bitter taste is leaving. Get ready for good things. Come on, we have to believe it. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Those who believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He crowns you with favor. So you need to start carrying yourself as somebody crowned with favor. That means you're a king. We know a crown speaks of royalty you are royalty not king charles i know some of you follow the royal or the royalty etc but i don't i follow the royal blood that is seated on a throne in heaven and i follow that lineage and that bloodline that comes through jesus christ from abraham through the seed of abraham that's now my inheritance so i am more royal than King Charles. I'm sorry to say that to you. As much as you're impressed with King Charles and his crown, I am more impressed with you and the crown that you have on your head. And the crown that I talk about this morning is a crown of favor. That means you are not a beggar. That means you are not a loser. That means you are not a wannabe. That means you are not a dropout. That means you are not a, a inferior individual. You are crowned with favor. I'm getting ahead of myself and you are crowned with glory and honor. That's what God has placed upon your head. Why do you think God puts it upon your head? Because you've got to get your thinking to change. You've got to start thinking differently about yourself. You're not an orphan. You're not a beggar. You're not a slave. You're a son. You're a child. You're a daughter of the living God. And you have to start to carry yourself as somebody that is highly favored. Come on, walk with me like somebody highly favored. Walk with me, come on. Walk with me, Holly, come on, carry yourself. Like you, you've got places to go, you've got things to do. Come on, when you go for the job interview, you have a crown of favor on your head. They can be 30 CVs, they're gonna pick your CV. When you walk into that business deal, you have the crown of favor upon your head. Do you believe it? You are gonna get the breakthrough in the name of Jesus Christ, come on. God has highly favored you and the favor of God is going to do for you what you cannot do for yourself. The favor of God is one of the manifestations of the love that God has for His people and He knows that we will not succeed in life without favor. That's why He blesses us with favor. He bestows favor upon us. He puts a crown. A crown talks of headship, speaks of dominion. It speaks of rulership. Amen. So I don't care whether you're educated or not. You have been crowned with favor. You are highly favored by God in the name of Jesus Christ. Say amen and give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. So uh, uh, that crown is symbolic of you carrying the rulership of Jesus Christ in this life, because the Bible says we rule and reign through Christ Jesus. That means you are crowned to defeat your enemies. You are crowned to succeed, to excel, and to have dominion in life. You are crowned to reign over whatever reigned over you before. So, uh, so the days of your trouble are over. Why? Because God has crowned you with favor. Your, your days of defeat are over. Why? Because God has crowned you with favor. You have to believe it. You cannot be neutral and expect yourself to progress in life. You have to wear the crown with dignity and change your thoughts and believe what God says about you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Because as a man thinketh, so is he. You think you're a beggar, you act like a beggar. You think like a loser, you act like a loser. God says, no, I've crowned you with favor. My favor will go before you. My favor will surround you. Psalm 8 verse 1, O Lord, O Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. You've set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babies and nursing infants, you've ordained strength because of your enemies. That you may silence the enemy and the avenger when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars. Those are not the stars in your wife's eyes. Which you have ordained. What is man? That you are mindful of him. Or the son of man that you visit him. For you have made him a little lower than the angels. That word angels is Elohim. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. So we created in the image of God. And we are created to reign like God. We are not gods. We created just lower. The angels are below us. We do understand that, right? He says, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. We might talk about it next week. Listen, if you get a revelation of this, you're not going to be sitting like that. So you have a crown of favor. You have a crown of glory. Hallelujah. You're going to go from glory to glory. You're not going to, you may fall down, but you're going to get back up again. You're going to go from glory to glory. You have honor upon your head. That means people are going to like you. People are going to do business with you. You carry yourself as a man of honor, as a woman of honor, in spite of your mistakes, your mishaps, your past, your setbacks. You are crowned, he says, with glory and honor. And because of that crown, it's a crown of dominion. He says, you have made him to have dominion over all the work of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. So, so you know, sometimes people talk and they say, well, pastor, under, under the circumstances, I'm doing okay. No, you, you're not under circumstances. You see that with Christ in heavenly places. Amen. Are you listening to me? So we need, we, we need a change, yeah, in our minds. This is where we need the change. We need this crown this revelation to change the way we think. We have to stop thinking like victims and begin to think like victors. We have to stop thinking as people that are under and think as people that are seated above. We have to stop thinking as people that are cursed and understand that in Christ we have been blessed. We are crowned with glory and honor. And, and, and this favor of God, listen, will even cause your enemies to make peace with you. This crown of favor will even cause your enemies to bless you. Listen, those who were against you are going to turn around and they are going to bless you. They won't even know why, but God is going to use them to give you the promotion, to give you the job, to give you the opportunity. Those who conspired against you, like Jacob's brother, there's going to be a Judah that intervenes and says no. Let's bless this person. Let's give him another opportunity because favor will exalt you. Favor will protect you like a shield. Favor will, will exalt you. Favor will lead you higher. That's what a crown of favor will do. And I'll tell you again, you have a crown of favor and a crown of blessing upon your head in Jesus' name. Amen. So everywhere you go, you need to remind yourself I'm the favorite one. I'm the favorite one. You go for the job interview. Even if, if, if they, if they say after the first round, there's, still, uh, there's 10 other uh, people they're still looking at, you, you declare the favor of God. And if it's not that job, it's because God has a better job for you. You don't give up because God's favor is going to take you places you cannot take yourself in Jesus' name. So you need to remind yourself that you are crowned with glory and honor. So you have to expect God's favor, that favor on your head, to work through you. First in your mind, you have to think differently. Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. We need to think like kings because we are kings. We have to carry ourselves like royalty because we are royalty. We don't shuffle. We're not beggars. We have been blessed and we have been crowned. We have power. I said we have power to succeed. We have power to excel in life. We have the power. We have the favor. 
God's favor in our lives. So expect the favor of God to do what nothing else can do. Expect that favor because that what it, what it means is to gain approval on your behalf. To gain acceptance for you. To gain special benefits and blessing for you. That's what favor does. People sign the deal and they don't want to. You buy the property, and I've done that a few times. I mean, I made an a, a off on a property once. I just uh, looked on, 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 on the internet quickly, saw a property, and it was a good deal. I, I made a ridiculous offer. I don't want to say throw numbers out yet. It's irrelevant. Nothing to do with you, really. It's just I can't give my testimonies because some of you will fall out of your chairs. But in any case, uh, I mean, the property was in the market for a ridiculous price. I made an offer um, like four times less, and the person already had an other offer now you can do your mathematics. Three times more, the offer I made, which was accepted, the person paid the deposit, then the person pulled out, lost the deposit, and the, the person just wanted to sell the property. So I bought to sell. Bought the property, never even saw it. Bought it by the unction of the Holy Ghost. Flew down, bought it. And the lady who comes to say, How in the world did you manage this? Everybody down here is talking about the sale. This has never happened. I said, favor. <laughs> I said, favor. She said, what? She's like, what? I said, God's favor. Oh, she, she, she's not a Christian. She doesn't get it. She has no cooking clue what I'm talking about. I said to her, favor. Sat in the car. I said, favor. Tell you many stories like that. That's why I tell people in business, making money is not difficult. I'm committed to build a church, but if I was a businessman, I'd make money, believe me. Because the opportunities are out there. It's how you think. You think wrong, you're done. You're not getting anywhere. You have to think right about money, think right about business, and carry yourself as somebody that is blessed. Carry yourself as somebody that is going somewhere and, and see the right opportunities. When to buy, when to sell. Right? I mean, we bought church property, uh, uh, bought a piece of land, uh, 7 million, and sold it for 15 million years back, and then we built a building in the north in, 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 in uh, uh, a Bloomingdale. See, most pastors don't have common sense. You have a pastor that has got common sense and business savvy. Okay, so the land we bought in uh, Johannesburg, uh, God woke me up in London. I saw the land, Googled it. Uh, God just said a little thing to me. Cast your net on the other side, because we were looking for land, land, land for years. And then God woke me up, 2 o'clock in the morning. And I Googled, and I saw this piece of land. I emailed Dr. Louis. I said, find out about the land. And the person who owed the land was not in touch with the property market in South Africa. So I said, you make a very aggressive bid. And the guy said, I want to think about it. I said, there's no time to think. Yay or nay? Because I knew nobody's going to block the and he said, yay. And we bought, listen, we bought that piece of property, the land in Johannesburg, where the property there sells for over 15 million rand a, a, a hectare. We bought um, uh, 3.4 hectares for like uh, 20 what? 20 million. Yeah, so. Yeah. Favor, man. Favor, favor, favor. If that, if that property is meant for you, God's going to close everybody else's eyes. Uh, but just for that moment, you better seize it. You better pounce in Jesus' name. There, there's a window that you have to work with God's favor. So um, you're not going to reach your God's destiny without favor. So God himself says, I crowned you with favor. God himself says, I've put a crown of glory and honor upon your head. Now watch the royalty. I don't. I know many of you do. Because you tell me and it irritates me. But they, they are taught to carry themselves a certain way, right? If you go shop in London, then there's a crown above the shops where they go to shop. So when they go, they stop everybody else. Only they can go in there. Because they have favor because they are royalty. Now, who are you? <laughs> 
Listen, if the whole restaurant is full, expect to get a seat at the best place. Come on, because you are favored in the name of Jesus Christ. If there is no opportunity, expect that you are going to be the one to get the opportunity. If, if, if they say uh, you are too white to make the team, expect that God's favor will get you selected into the team. If they say you are too white to study medicine, you expect God's favor to get you into the university of your dream in the name of Jesus Christ. If you, if you come from a disadvantaged background and they say you are never going to get a degree, you make up your mind like this testimony we heard that no, I'm going to be the first one to get a degree because I'm highly favored. I don't identify with my past. I don't identify with my poverty. I identify with who God says I am. I am a little princess. I'm a queen. I'm a king. I am royalty. I'm highly favored. I'm going to do great things with my life. I'm going to break this curse over my bloodline. In the name of Jesus Christ, I am favored. That means I am blessed in Jesus' name. I'm not going through life neutral. I'm going through life as a ruler with dominion. I'm going to carry myself a certain way. When I walk into a place, the environment is going to change because I'm not like everybody else. I'm not a loser. I don't come from Lucifer. I'm a winner. I come from Christ. I hail from God and the greater one lives on the inside of me. Shout amen and give him a praise. Thank you. No, you can give him a better praise than that in Jesus' name. So you have to believe that that favor in your life will turn every defeat into victory, will bring life to death, fruitfulness to barren areas, freedom and liberty to bondage. We're going to see it this week. As you come to worship God, God's going to do many things in people's lives. I hope you've set this week aside because He's a reward of those who diligently seek Him. Diligently. We studied that. We can't go back there. Not those who, by the way, seek Him. Those who diligently seek Him. So, say it again this morning. Third time, say, I'm highly favored by God and people. Of course, you need favor to work in both areas, with God and people. Those who dislike you are going to begin to like you. Those who never wanted to do business with you, are going to begin to do business with you. You have to change your thoughts about yourself. The way you see yourself and the way you believe other people see you. Say this this morning, say, I am blessed. Therefore, I cannot be cursed. So God's favor will release God's continual blessing, a flow, a rubber. A blessing into your life. So you have supernatural acceleration. Everywhere you look, blessing. Blessing upon blessing. It won't be long now. We need to get ready. Not go back into neutral and cynicism. Stay in faith. Believing for breakthrough. Believing that favor will bring the right staff. Favor will give you the right job. Favor will give you a company with the right benefits. Favor will bring the right clients. Favor will cause your child to come back with God. Favor will make things better in your life in Jesus' name. Maybe you need favor with that young girl that is not noticing you right now so you could actually marry her. Amen. Well, that, I don't know if I would do that. If I, ask a, if I was young and asked a girl on a date, she said no. I absolutely would not pray that God opens her eyes. I would just realize she's totally blind. Psalm 27 verse 1, Yahweh, because of your strength, the king is strong. Look how he rejoices in you. He bursts out with joyful song because of your victory. For you have given him his heart's desire. Delight yourself therefore in the Lord also, and he will give you the desires of your heart. You delight yourself, Psalm 37 verse 4 says, in the Lord. And He will give you the desires of your heart. Now the king is you, right? You're a king. It's David, but you identify with what David says. Everything and everything he asks for. You haven't withheld a thing from the king. Rich blessings overflow with every encounter with you. I'm going to leave this place depressed. 
I'm not going to leave God's presence confused. So I say to you this week of worship, revival, dead things are going to come alive. God's going to restore your sight. Hope is going to come back into your heart. God's going to put fresh wind in your sails. Come on and get rid of that COVID fatigue that is still plaguing you in Jesus' name. He says, reach his blessing in flow with every encounter with you. And you placed a royal crown of gold upon his head. He wanted life and you've given it to him. And more. The days of blessing stretch on one after the other. Hallelujah. Somebody say blessing. Come on, man. Say blessing. Say it. Say blessing. Blessing. Say blessing. It's not a bad word. It's not a curse word. Say blessing. Say blessing. 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 Blessing upon blessing. So no, no scripture in the Bible where God says, follow me and I'm going to curse you. Every person that followed God, God said, I'm going to bless you. He says, the days of blessing stretch on one after the other forever. You've honored him and made him famous. Hallelujah. You're going to become a famous actress. You're going to become a famous businessman. You're going to become a more famous doctor. You're going to become a famous advocate. Oh, you can say amen every any time you want. You're going to become a famous principal. You're going to become a famous athlete. But you will give God the glory because that's what the blessing of God will do for you. People are going to talk about you. God said, I'm going to make your name great. Oh, come on, man, in Jesus' name. What are we believing God for? God wants to exalt you. There's a crown of exaltation. We'll talk about it. Religious spirits hate this kind of message because they want people to stay poor and they think that's holiness. It's not. Jesus said, I've come that you may have life. Have it more abundantly. Glory garments are upon him. And you surround him with splendor and majesty. Your victory heaps blessings after blessings upon him. There it is again. What joy and bliss he tastes. Rejoicing before your face. How many of you feel like rejoicing when, 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 when you have a breakthrough or when blessings are poured out upon your life? Come on, you just feel like dancing. You feel like praising God. Well, you better get ready because I'll tell you that God is going to surprise you and God is going to bless you and God is going to accelerate things in your life. I know it because we are going into a time of favor for His church, for His people. And that means for you and me, my brother, favor, favor. I declare it over your life. Hallelujah. Favor. Isaiah 61 verse 7, instead of shame, you shall have double honor. Instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore in their land, right here in Pretoria, there in Bloemfontein, in Vintook. Read there. Therefore in their land they shall possess double everlasting joy shall be theirs. Oh, come on, man. Don't sit and look at me in that time of tone of voice. Just shout double. Shout double portion. Shout double blessing. Double anointing. Double victory. Just say double. Get a smile on your face. Get out of your head. Get in your heart, pastor. Come on. You've got to believe it. This is not an emotion and it's, it's, it's an expression of your response to God's word this morning. So a crown of favor will cause your, your enemies to bless you. And you need to go write these things down on your wall. You need to go write down, I have a crown of favor. The least likely person in my life is going to bless me. Say, my boss is going to like me in the right way. Amen. My boss is going to bless me. Those who are trying to get rid of me in this company, God is going to use them to promote me. Amen. God will use people to bless you that actually wants to uh, uh, plot your demise. 
And nothing gives him a bigger kick, I think. To see the devil's children bless his children. Yeah. That's, uh, we can't afford to lose you. He has a double bonus. Just suddenly they bless you. can happen like this. can happen like this. There can be a, a, a clink clink on your cell phone tomorrow morning and somebody just gave you a special deposit or, or just a special bonus. Somebody just said, we appreciate you, you value you. Or, or just tomorrow there can be a WhatsApp that says, we want to do business with you. Something you've been talking about three years ago. Suddenly your name is in that person's mind again and that person wants to do business with you. That supernatural favor that I'm releasing by the power of the Holy Ghost on your behalf to go in every direction, every area of your life, that it will attract good things to you. It will attract blessings to you. It will attract favor with other people to you in Jesus' name. I declare it, I believe it, because God's word says so in Jesus' name. So, in Exodus 11 verse 2, because God, before God brings the people out of the land of bondage, He says, Speak now to the, in the hearing of the people, and let every man ask from his neighbor, and every woman from a neighbor, articles of silver and gold. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Now, they loved their gold and their silver more than anything else. And for a season, they were ready to part with it. People are going to part with things that in their right minds, they would not have parted with it. They're going to sell something to you and afterwards they're going to say, I don't know how in the world I ever did it. I shouldn't have done it. But now it's a sign, it's a done deal, etc. I, I, I promote you. I, I'm going to pay you this. I'm going to do this, 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 this. I believe it. You, you get ready for it. God, some of you are in this level, but because your work is excellent, and I want to say that because your character, your integrity, and your hard work, your performance is what will give you favor with people above you. So not just God's favor and you're a lazy bum, because God's favor turns you into somebody that's excellent. Somebody that is better. Somebody that works harder. Somebody that's on time. Like a Joseph. We'll get there in a second. So I believe God is pouring out favor on His church. And I'm ready to receive it, okay? In Psalm 102, verse 13, He says, You will arise and have mercy on Zion for the time, of favor, the time to favor her. Yes, the set time has come. For your servants take pleasure in her stones and show favor to her dust, which means many people. So the nations shall fear the Lord when the church is favored. When you become the top businessman in the community. Not the top drug dealer, the top rugby player, the top musician, the top scientist, the top doctor. There's nothing average about you. You were created in the image and the likeness of God. God wants you to be 10 times better. That's what God's favor. Oh, you better get ready in Jesus' name. That, that's what God's favor is going to do. You need to get a hunger to grow again, a hunger to improve yourself, a hunger to better yourself, a hunger to be the standout person in Jesus' name. Then God's favor can take you places you cannot take yourself. Say, so the nations will fear the Lord the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth your glory. For the Lord shall build up Zion. He shall appear in his glory. Proverbs 16 verse 15. In the light of a king's face is life and his favor is like a, a cloud of the latter rain. Believe me, you want favor with your boss. You want favor with your decision makers, those who are over you. Acts 2 verse 47, the church increased in favor with all people. We declare favor with all people, right? No matter the culture, favor, God's favor. Daniel in captivity, the Bible says, is a eunuch. He, he, he's taken, it's actually a sad story, he, he was castrated, very few people know it, as a young man. So uh, to produce is taken away from him, that's what Satan is trying to do with this next generation. He's trying to make them sterile in their relationship with God, gives them many other options. 
So although he was made a eunuch, he never lost his passion for God. And he stood for God. And he purposed not to defile himself in captivity, in slavery. He never became a victim. He never became bitter. That's why I say to people, they don't always like it. I say we cannot sit and blame apartheid for another 50 years. And you, you, you still uh, 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 drink the bitter poison of what happened in apartheid. You have to put that bitterness behind yourself. You have to stand up out of your captivity and you have to believe that God will use what was meant for evil to turn it around for your good. Think about this Daniel. If there could be a better person, it could be Daniel. But he did not. He served in Babylon where they took him as a slave. And he fulfilled his destiny in a place of oppression. And God gave him favor with the eunuchs. And we know the story. His three friends as well, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they had favor and they were 10 times smarter, 10 times wiser, 10 times better. So they get, got the top jobs in the land as slaves. So, so, so people can come with their new policies, employment, equity policies, etc., etc., etc. They can come with all their clever words, blah, 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 blah. Listen to me very carefully. You do what you shouldn't comply in your company. But I say to every person sitting here today, those people, those pieces of paper do not determine your destiny. Some ministers sitting in some place somewhere performing some documents do not determine your future. Your future has been settled by God. Black, white, colored, Asian, your future is settled by God and you will fulfill all that God has for you because of the favor of God upon your life. Say amen. You're not going to think like a white person, so I can't get a job in that company. They're going to come looking for you in the very company that they say white people cannot be employed. You're not going to say because I'm Asian, I can't get a job, 0.1% only. Listen, they're going to employ you because you are worth 1.10%. You are worth 10%. You have God's favor upon your life. You don't have to bow. You don't have to comply to what people say in the world. Because God's favor will bring the exception in your life. Say amen today in Jesus' name. I know the television audience has to go. We love you. If you live anywhere close to Pretoria, come join us. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 7 o'clock for our nights of revival. And may God's favor just be upon you. And may God take you places you never thought possible in Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. So uh, that, that's why you shouldn't watch all the news. I mean, people are afraid. Oh, there's a, a, a total blackout is imminent. Well, either the Minister of Energy is the biggest liar or not. Sorry. Uh, somebody sat with me this week in Bloomington, and they, they're building a whole camp for some people. I don't want to say who it is but real senior people because the total blackout is imminent. Fear. Now, either this minister lies, and I'll tell you what, if he's lying and there's a total blackout, then we're going to go find him in the midst of darkness. That's it. Don't lie to us. Don't play games with us. You play games, listen, don't vote for them. If they don't fix this energy the way they said they would, that should be enough for you not to vote for, for people that have failed you. That's it. I'm not saying what party to vote for. But I'll tell you what. If people care so little for people that we have people dying now, they're in Pretoria of water, and those are... Uh, uh, there should be criminal charges against government officials. People should be criminally charged because it's actually their responsibility uh, 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 to make sure that water is safe. It's their responsibility. People should be criminally charged. Now, that's not got much to do with favor, but um, we need to, we, the, the church actually has the power. 
I said to the new mayor in Bloom, and I said, because initially, whatever, when I preached, I could see it wasn't open. Then he opened towards the end and got saved, etc. I'm unfazed, man. I've seen so many politicians come and go. I've done this for 38 years. Uh, I don't care whether you're a premier, minister. I've sat with all of them. And I mean it honorably, respectfully. You make decisions that we have to live in tomorrow. You're out of power. Then we still have to sit with your decisions that you make that do not build this country. So, thank you. We want responsible leadership in this country. Amen. We want people that can actually run our municipalities. Yeah, yes, amen, man. You know what I'm saying is the truth. So, nowhere does the Bible say we must just pray. We must pray and vote. Vote them out. They, if, they, if they don't fix this that they said they would, vote them out. Yes, I said it. I said it right to your face sitting here today. If they don't fix what they promised, they will fix. Vote them out. But if they fix it, then maybe. But let's see. We were promised that we'd be in, 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 in the load shedding too in December. Okay? So things can only get better, right? So we don't want to see somebody stand with a camera anymore and lie to us. We've had enough of that. Or the, when a question is asked, we are launching a, a, a committee of investigation. Never to bring an answer. Now I know some of you ANC worshippers, uh, I've offended you, yeah. Okay. I know it. And I'm apolitical. I don't even know who the next governing party should be. Let me be very clear. So I have nobody that I have in my mind. But I'll tell you something. I will not vote for anybody that doesn't. And I said this to, to all the DA uh, 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 mayors I've met recently. I said, you better bring God into your constitution. Because I don't see God anywhere. I see a lot of socialism. I see a lot of leftists. I don't see God anywhere. I don't see God anywhere. Where does God fit in? And they look at me like, uh, 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 uh. I said, no, 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 no. Talk to me about God. Where does God fit into your politics? EFF, where does God fit into your politics? ANC, where does God fit into your politics? He used to fit in there, but he isn't fitting in there anymore. There's no place for God in that political party any longer. DA, where does God fit in? Nowhere. I challenge you. Unfortunately, some of the worst things that are, that are coming into our, from our, into our education come from the leftist circles, which is to the detriment of our grandchildren. So I'm not voting for people just to oust somebody else. We need a God intervention. We need somebody we can actually vote for. Somebody of integrity. That starts with God as the highest authority. I said, that starts with God as the highest authority. That will be accountable. I mean, some of you don't want to vote because you're loyal to things that happened 50 years ago. But if people failed you, if you had a good husband for three years and then he failed you for 50 years... Word wakker man. Blikskottel. Ok, ek moet gaan. Ek sien ek weer, I'm busy offending everybody. I love you. I hope to see you on Tuesday. Have a great life. No, have a great day. God bless you.
No one moving in this place out of respect for what God is busy doing. You've come here this morning, you heard Pastor speak about favor. You realize your life's not right with God. Maybe you've walked with Him at some point in time. Maybe you were on fire and your relationship was good, but you've wandered away. This morning, we want to give you the opportunity to make right with God. This is what the service is all about, family. It's this very moment in time where God comes and He knocks on the door of your heart. I don't know what you're going through. We don't know what you are facing. But this morning, you have hope in the Savior. His name is Jesus Christ. Make right with Him today if you're not right. If you can't say without a shadow of a doubt, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. We want to give you that opportunity. So with no one looking around, quickly, unashamedly, lift up your hand so that we can pray for you. Say, I want to make right with Jesus today. Lift up your hand quickly so we can pray for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All over this place, hands are going up. If you've put up your hand, you can put it down. Thank you. On the balcony, quickly, if you need to make right with Jesus, you've got this one life got this one moment don't wait until tomorrow right now if that is you unashamedly it's between you and God lift up your hand so we can pray for you quickly raise up your hand so I can pray for you say father here I am I want to make right with you today if that is you lift up your hand thank you thank you So what I want us to do right now, those of you who've lifted up your hand, or maybe you've not even lifted up your hand, take your personal belongings. Maybe you know that you should make right with God this morning. If that is you, we want to invite you to come to the front just for logistical reasons. So we can't can't come to all of you. Come to the front so we can pray with you, so we can make right with Jesus this is between you and him man this life is not a game so if that is you take your personal belongings step out of your seat maybe the person next to you encourage them say I'll go with you but step out of your seat we're gonna clap our hands we're gonna encourage you and you come and make right with Jesus today come on let's let's encourage them as they come so if you put up your hand step out of your seat come to the front right now Amen. Oh, come on, man. Step out of your seat if you know you need to be here. Don't look to the right or to the left. You make right with Jesus. moment step out of your seat he's waiting for you he wants to make right with you he's knocking at the door of your heart to you feel the uneasiness that's our Holy Spirit speaking to you come on
Maybe ask the person next to you, can I go with you? Let's go make right with Jesus. Quickly, let's go fishing. Amen. still coming amen the best decision you can ever make is to make right with God amen it is our privilege and our honor as your spiritual family now to firstly welcome you into the kingdom of God but to also share this moment with you where God is going to Take your life and make you into who He wants you to be. So would you just be so kind as to just put your hand on your heart. And we're going to lead you in a simple prayer, which is going to be the start of an amazing journey with God. Amen. Let's just pray. Say, Heavenly Father, I believe, Jesus, that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died and you rose again for my sin. Father, I ask you, forgive me of my sin. Make me a brand new person. Thank you that the old is past and the new has come. Thank you that I now have the grace to walk this life in your light. In Jesus' mighty name. And everyone says amen and amen. So family, what we're going to do, just very quickly, it's not to embarrass you or anything. We've got a VIP room for you prepared. There's pastors, there's leaders there. It's going to just pray a simple prayer with you. If you need a Bible, we want to put a Bible in your hand. We're here to support you and we're going to walk this journey with you. We're really, really excited for what God is busy doing in your life. Amen. So if you can just be so kind as to turn to my right, your left, follow the pastors. In the other facilities, follow the pastors. Let's give them a hand as they go. Amen, family, you may have a seat and turn your attention to the screens for this week's offering clip. Last week, we've seen how Abram, at the drop of a hat, was willing to sacrifice them the thing that was most dear to him. We read in Genesis chapter 26, what God said, because Abram was willing to sacrifice, that was most dear to him. God said in Genesis chapter 22, verse 16 to 18, He says, Because you have obeyed me, and I have not withheld even your son, your only son, I swear by my own name that I will certainly bless you, and through your descendants all the nations of the earth will be blessed, all because you have obeyed me. Family, we know that God kept His part of the promise. He blessed Abram, and Abram became a very strong nation. We know that because of a famine, they had to move to Egypt. In Egypt, they, be, they even prospered even more to such an extent that they became a threat to the Egyptians. They were taken into slavery, and we know for about 400 years they were in slavery, and they cried out to God, and God took them from slavery into the promised land. One of the things that God instructed Aaron and Moses to teach the people when they arrived in the promised land was the following. We read in Deuteronomy chapter 26 the following. 
when you enter the land the Lord your God is giving you as a special possession and you have conquered it and settled there, put some of the first produce from each crop you harvest into a basket and bring it to the designated place of worship, the place the Lord your God chooses for His name to be honored. Go to the priest in charge at that time and say to him, with this gift, I acknowledge to the Lord, your God, that I've entered the land He swore to our ancestors He would give us. The priest will take it, the basket from your hand and set it before the altar of the Lord, your God. You must then say in the presence of the Lord, your God, my ancestor Jacob was a wandering Aramean who went to live as a foreigner in Egypt. His family arrived few in number, but in Egypt they became a large and mighty nation. When the Egyptians oppressed and humiliated us by making us their slaves, we cried out to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. He heard our cries and saw our hardship, toil and oppression. So the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a strong and powerful arm, with overwhelming terror and with miraculous signs and wonders. He brought us to this place and gave us this land flowing with milk and honey. And now, our Lord, I have brought you the first portion of the harvest you have given me from the ground. Family, their sacrifice was a sign of their gratefulness. All of us in this building today can testify how God has brought us out of slavery. We were all enslaved by sin. And as Moses said, he said, uh, God heard their cries. He saw their hardship, the toil and their oppression. And that is exactly the same thing that God did for each and every one of us. Can you remember the life you lived before you came to salvation, before Jesus stepped into your life? God liberated us. God set us free. We are no longer slaves of sin. We are no longer under that yoke of slavery. God has set us free. And if we have to be honest today, our tithe and our offering is our way of coming to God on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, and to bring our first fruits, our tithe, our offering, that what God has blessed us with, we bring it out of a thankful heart. We come on a Sunday and we bring our tithe and offering to say to God, God, thank you for not only saving me, but thank you for blessing me. Thank you for bringing me into this land of milk and honey. So family, our giving today is from a grateful heart. And I want to encourage you today that you will bring your tithe and your offering today with a grateful heart for God has done great things in your life. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace, your goodness. Thank you for setting us free. Thank you for bringing us into a land of milk and honey. And we bring our tithe and our offering today as our sign, not only of remembrance for what you've done for us, but out of a heart of gratefulness to thank you for your blessing, to thank you for what you have done in our lives. Please accept this today as a well-pleasing offering in your sight. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We're going to wait on you for the tithes and offerings. We're going to keep the doors closed for your security. And while the ushers and hostesses receive your offering today, we're going to listen to an anointed item.
consume all I am I lose myself in the one who's holy As we come face to face You take my breath away All I can do is cry holy, holy The more that I enter in You consume all I am this morning please can the parents that are dedicating their children the leaders please let's wait for our members as they dedicate their children this morning please parents bring your children to the fourth the reason why we do baby dedication is because we want to entrust the child's life in the ways of God it is because we are making a very serious dedication before the God and the congregation that we will raise the children that God has given us and commit ourselves that will raise them up in the ways of God and also in the word of God. That's why we always make it a public declaration. And one of the reasons why we dedicate them actually in the church, in the front of the congregation, it's because even if the congregation don't know the children's name, it is because when you go to the closet in your time of prayer and worship and you remember the parents that were dedicating those children, then you can stand literally in the gap and say, Father, those kids, I might not know their names, but they were dedicated in your presence. Lord, can you, can you protect them? Can you bring forth provision? So it's very critical to understand why we do baby dedication in the churches because you are witnessing this thing. And once you have witnessed this thing, it has to become part of your prayer, your prayer points. And also the parents that are bringing the children here in front, you have to take responsibility. So your responsibility is not only to bring them to be dedicated. This is just the beginning of your responsibilities. So you have to make it 100% sure and, and literally take serious responsibility and say, these children, this child, I will, I will teach them. I will train them in the ways of the Lord. I will disciple this child myself in the ways of God in prayer, fasting. This is what I'm going to do. That's why God wants us to do that. And also, as the parents, you will take, you will, you will demonstrate the practical example of godliness into these kids. In other words, they will see in the evening when you go to bed, you are praying. The food, you are praying. There's a prayer and fast. There's a, there's, a Bible, there's a Bible study. There's a reciting and meditating on the Word of God because what you demonstrate in the natural, in most cases, is what the kids will believe. Sometimes we say and then they don't hear, but what they see it's what they will become. So as a, as a father, what you do to those kids, how you treat your, the mother, how you pray, that young boy will say, when I grow, I want to be like my father. I will lead my family. So it's very, it's a very because the Bible says in Proverbs 22, 6, it says, teach your children in the way that they fit their needs. And even when they are old, they will not leave the right path. When they go to university, they will be able to stand by themselves against the kingdom of darkness. When they, they are ailing and their spirit is failing them, 
because they've seen how mama and papa they were praying they will do the same the same thing so it's very critical to raise these young ones in the ways of, in the ways of god the bible says in one psalm 127 it says behold the children are the heritage from the lord now if god gives you a gift you have to look after the gift because when you look after the gift you become obedient to the call of god to being a parent and the bible says before i formed you each and every one of them before they were formed in their mother's womb this is what god says he says i chose you before you were born i've set you apart i appointed you to become a prophet to the nation that was prophet to the nation in other words i want you to be my mouthpiece to bring justice and a good behavior in the in the in the area of of your life where you are where you are operating so god has chosen them for a time like this so that in 15, 17 years, they will become the mouthpiece in a media sphere, economic sphere, in arts and culture. Because otherwise we are raising and the children, they don't know it. But when we set them apart for a time like this, God will raise them up to the level where he wants them, where he wants them uh, to be. And the Bible says in Deuteronomy 6, it says, listen, o Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord alone, and you must, and you must love the Lord with your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your strength. Verse 6, it says, And you must commit yourself wholeheartedly to this command that I'm giving you today. Very important. Verse 7, it says, Repeat them again and again to your children. Which commandment? What is in the Bible? The promises of God. In healing, I will heal you. In blessing, I will bless you. My blessing will come over you, overtake you, so that can be joy. So the commandment of the Lord, God says, you must repeat it again and again to your children. That's why we have to take responsibility to raise them in the ways of God. Repeat them again and again to, the children, to your children. Talk about them when you, when you are home and talk about them when you are on the road and when you are going to bed. And every time when you get up, talk to your children about the things of God. Because the Bible says in Philippians 1.27, it says, I'm coming back. But I want to be to hear about your affairs, that you've kept unity in the spirit for the sake of the gospel. So, so, so this thing is not just the baby dedication. We can eat cookies, drinking quickie. No, 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 no. This is this is this is us before God taking the, the responsibility. And these children, we need to teach them how to love by the way we treat others. We have to teach them generosity by the way we give. We have to teach them how to worship God by themselves. In the way we become obedient to the call of God and how we worship God ourselves. We have to teach them the righteousness of God by the way we live in Jesus. Martin and family, I'm going to ask you, ask you to stretch forth your hands. And the pastors and the leaders who can carry on praying for the, for the children. Because you see, this is so serious. Father, we dedicate every single child that has been dedicated this morning, God Almighty. Father, we ask you in the name of Jesus Christ that you will bring a divine protection a divine favor that you will lead them and you will guide them in the ways that they should go lord father we ask you this morning in the name of jesus christ that you will protect them in the morning and in the evening in the name of jesus christ we ask you that you'll cover them with your blood in jesus mighty name we ask you lord that you'll deploy your angels around them 24 7 365 days a year in the name of jesus christ we ask you god that they will raise them up and become the women and, and the men of god that you've raised them to be that they will become an example to the dying generation out there we thank and we honor you that's what you are starting today lord in the name of jesus christ they will see that you are God, you are the Christ, you are the Messiah in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask you that you will baptize them with your holy fire, your holy anointing, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, that when they fail in the health and they fail in the spirit, they will remember you. Father, we thank you and we honor you in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people say amen and amen. Family, thank you so much for coming to church. Thank you for bringing people to church. I'm going to ask the parents here just to turn around and show the congregation this beautiful gift that you've just dedicated to the lord come on family let's give them a round of applause this is the future in jesus mighty name amen before we go i know some of you the pastors have sent you a message for new members orientation we're going to ask you those are uh,
joining the church are going to do new members orientation please can you chill with us at this at this block pastor hans will come communicate with you and then from there you'll be directed where you must go for new members orientation don't forget tonight pastor Hans will be preaching invite your world in jesus mighty name amen family god bless I'm not